Hello class, for this science um, project, I'm going to be dissecting a bird. Now, to dissect an animal means that the animal has died, its body is preserved, or it's as in like it's not rotting away or, or disintegrating. And it gives us a chance to take a really close look at the way the body is made of the animal. So as I'm dissecting this bird on this video, I'd like you to keep in mind a couple of really important points that you're going to have to be thinking about and writing about after this. And the most important one is you need to be thinking about the traits of this bird. Now a trait is like a characteristic it's usually, when it comes to a plant or an animal, it's something that defines it and why it looks the way it does. For us people, a trait could be brown eyes and dark hair, or really large shoe size, or really small hands, um, or skin color, or um, yeah, those types of things are traits. But for animals, Traits are really meaningful because um, they help the animal to perhaps survive. So I want us to think about what kind of traits does this bird that we're about to dissect have so that it can use them for survival, to stay alive in the wild, in the wilderness. So if, um, if a dead animal makes you kind of queasy or a little bit like squiggly, squirmy, that's okay. Um, just to give it your best try. You don't have to watch the entire video if you don't want to, but I suspect that you might actually enjoy this. Now, I, did, I certainly did not kill this bird. This bird was killed by my cat at home. That's what cats do. They're hunters. This cat is an indoor and outdoor cat. That means she travels inside and outside, and she just goes in and out as she pleases, and she happens to be a great little hunter, and she likes to exercise her hunting skills. So she killed this bird, and she left it on our doorstep for us as a gift at home. And I saw it outside. The, mo the moment I stepped out, I noticed it. Um, and I thought, wow, you know what? This might be a great science activity for my class. So I decided to put it in a Ziploc bag, and I froze it to preserve it. Um, but before I did that, I walked back in the house, and I had lunch. Then when I came back out, the cat had eaten the head off of the bird in the meantime. When I went out the first time, the body of, was completely intact. The head was there. But then when I came back out, about an hour later, the head was gone. So the cat had come back and, and eaten off the head. The cat, the animals do these things. So you'll notice that it doesn't have a head. It has been decapitated. So it's gonna be really hard to identify the bird which is another really important thing when it comes to dissecting animals to identify exactly the kind of bird or animal it is. But we'll talk a, bit, a little bit about that during the dissection. Okay, everybody, enjoy. So here we have our small bird and you can see clearly that unfortunately the head has been removed by my cat but there are still some fantastic things that we can discover when we take a close look at this bird. And I would like to thank this bird, even though it's already died, I'd like to thank it for um, allowing us to use it for scientific study. And um, so I see you, bird, and thank you very much for your um, giving up your body for science here. So I've got um, some tools that I'd like to share with you. One, I've got a pair of tweezers. I'm using rubber gloves to make sure that I don't transfer any bacteria from this bird because it has already died. And although I froze it, it does have some harmful bacteria on its body that um, would not be good to get on my hands or my face or anywhere near me. So that's why I've got the gloves. I've got tweezers here. I have a household butter knife as a tool. And I've also got a, um, this is a like, a, like a sharp razor blade holder. So I can use this 
to try and dissect a little bit too. Now, I wanted you to think a lot about the traits of this bird. Specifically, what types of traits or characteristics or things about its body allow it to survive? So, this bird has delicate little claws that are actually quite long. Look at the size of those nails there compared with the size of the foot. In fact, this little claw, we could call it a talon, is almost as long as the toe. Can you imagine if your toenails were almost as long as your own toes? This is very unique. This is a trait of the bird that might help it to survive. And I wonder how. I wonder what these claws are actually used for. Then I also think about the weight of this bird. Now this bird is so lightweight and you actually can't notice that on your end, of course. But if I were to pick this thing up, it is so delicate in my hand and so light, I can't even notice that it has any weight. Barely perceptible how heavy this thing is. It's very lightweight. And because it's so lightweight, it allow, it's able for the bird to actually fly and be nimble in the air. Um, another thing that I wanted you to notice was that this bird is actually really quite small. You probably could realize that compared to the size of my hand, but if I were to use a, a ruler to measure its rough height, and I'm gonna account for its head if it were there, from head to tail, or for, from its head to its bottom of its body, is roughly less than th about three inches in length. So here I've got the, the head accounted for right about up here. And here starts my ruler. And then this is one, two, down here is about three inches. Now this bird might have had some longer tail feathers, but the size of its body ends, the, its body ends right about here. Another thing that I'd like you to notice is the shape of its wing. Now when a bird is resting, perched on a branch, for example, using these great talons in order to grab onto a branch with its lightweight body, um, it, the bird has its wings kind of tucked like that and closed. But when a bird is in flight, its wings spread open beautifully. And I'd like to, um, to show you a little, bit about, a little bit about how that actually can appear here. So if I'm gonna gently grab this portion of the wing and start to spread it out and fan out those feathers, you'll notice that the wing is actually quite wide and in how it spreads out. Look at how that beautifully can open up. And you'd notice that the feathers are dark color, but they have this really unique white stripe going along one side of the feather. I wonder if that is um, something to help it to survive. It's certainly a character trait, dark feathers with a, um, a little yellow stripe, actually. Um, Maybe that's something that was either passed down from its parents or something due to the environment in which it lived, or which it lived. Um, and then here we have some feathers of its chest or its back. These feathers are so delicate and fine. They're so soft to the touch. I can tell a little bit using this glove how soft they are. These feathers are designed to keep it warm, keep its body warm while being very lightweight. Because this bird is probably a migratory bird. Um, I, ha I have a feeling this is a type of a sparrow bird. Um, although I was not able to identify it using the Audubon website, which I encourage you to explore um, because I couldn't, you know, I didn't have a good look at its head. That, uh, you, looking at the head is really helpful when identifying any type of animal. Um, but I have a feeling it's a sparrow, and because it's probably a sparrow, 
I'll tell you a little bit about its environment and what it eats. It was found in my yard, which is in New York State, and my property is in the woods, so there's lots of old trees and lots of shrubs and bushes, lots of forest. So this bird probably was so at home and happy perching its little legs and feet and claws, talons here, on light, delicate branches of bushes and trees, and it probably ate berries a lot of seeds, and a lot of little insects from the ground. Um, those are the types of foods that it probably prefer to eat. All right. So we've noticed a couple of traits so far. We've noticed those talons on the feet. We've noticed how lightweight the bird actually is. We've noticed how it can spread its and fan out its, um, its wings when it's in flight beautifully so that it can really fly well and, and move really nimbly and agile um, in the air. That would probably be helpful when escaping predators like larger birds or cats or other animals such as foxes. Um, snakes, a bird definitely needs the escape mode of flight in order to get away from danger. That's, these are certainly character traits that would be necessary to survive. So in your response, when you write, um, when you type out your response to those questions, I'd really like you to keep those in mind. I hope that you enjoyed this little mini dissection. I'm not going to go and dig into the body itself, but if we were to, we would find organs such as lungs, a heart. We wouldn't find a brain, but we would find um, other organs that help the animal to produce because in order to actually survive, they must have babies. And so in this case, if this was a, um, a male or a female, it would either lay eggs or it would fertilize the eggs. So um, there you have it. Let me cover up these kind of gutsy area for those of you who are squeamish. Thank you again, Bird. I'm glad that you tuned in for this video. Enjoy typing your response. I want you to feel like you're a scientist and think a lot about the traits that we just discovered from this bird and how those traits play in the survival of the bird.